Hi and welcome to my tutorial on using the Hashcat GUI by Blandy UK, who is the moderator and creator of this tool at md5decryptor.co.uk. This is his tool that I'm using, combined with Hashcat, which is a password cracking tool developed by Hashcat. Um, his username is, I think, is Adam on his forums. I'm also using TechPower GPU Z to monitor my my temperatures of my graphics cards. So let's go ahead and begin here. Typically, I do not recommend using your CPU to crack passwords as it's very slow and the power of the GPU these days is very excellent. <coughs> so let's go ahead and begin here. First thing we did was we have the hash file. This is just which file you're going to be doing. There's two different ways we can do this. We can put files in from the clipboard in so you can copy and paste hashes off the internet or we can direct it to a file. And for this example, I have a test file that I like to use. Now we have different options here. First off, we can remove the found hashes after we um, find them. But for this test purposes, I'm not going to use that option. That way I can just reuse my test file later on. From this, you can select which type of attacks you want. They're straight, combination, brute force, hybrid dictionary and mask, or a hybrid mask and dictionary. I typically use a straight cat attack. From here, you select the different types of hash files. There's MD5, da 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 da, SHA1, MySQL, MTLMs, etc., 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 etc. There's a lot of options here. Typically, MD5 is what you're going to see a lot on the internet. Now, graphics options. This is options you're going to adjust based off of your uh, based off your graphics card. I have mine set to about where I think it's best for me. I have, a set, I have two video cards, so I have set to use all, but you can tell it to use one video card or the other video card. I just say it tell it to use mine to use both. From here, we have an output file name. And this is format, whether you want it just the hash and salt put out, a plain password set out, the hash plus the plain. And there's various other options. I tell mine usually to ignore any warnings. I usually put hash and plain, that way I can see the hash that's outputted and the plain as well. From here you would tell which binary to use, and this typically you want to be put in the same directory as your Hashcat GUI file, which also can be, the Hashcat GUI can be found at md5decryptor.co.uk. So what we do here is after we select our hash file, we select our rules. Let's just go for an easy rule. Best 64 is one of the easiest um, ones to use. Now, uh, you'll notice these toggles. These do not mean it does one attack after another. These actually combine these different rules. So typically, I do not do that unless I have a, a feeling that I need to use a more combination of a rule. So what we do here is after we have all our options set, we have our binary set in, we have our output directory set, we go ahead and press, you know, this button right here, which I think this changes often. And you can see I've got my temperature thermometers up here. I'm just going to go ahead and select my 5850 card so I can see what information it's putting out. And I just like to monitor my temperatures. So let's go ahead and press hash. And you can see it's starting to go here. Typically when you start, it'll build up the kernels that are necessary, and then it'll build up the dictionaries. And I've got a bunch of dictionaries I use, and as you can see, it's spilling right now through its different attacks. And if I press the status, which is the S key, you see right there, it says status right there. It's telling me what my rates I'm doing. I'm doing 207 mega hashes on my first card, 409 mega hashes on my second card for a combination of 617. And so far, it's recovered 32 out of the 2100 hashes, which is 1.52% of all the thing. And its current progress through this dictionary is 94% done. As you can see, it's just going along. We can also press status again to see. And actually, it looks like I probably errored out here, and I'd have to find out where the error is at. But we can go ahead and press quit. We see that we've recovered 32. Let's just go ahead and close this out. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. Let's try another different hash file. All right, let's see here. Let's go ahead and go for this one. It was the one I was working on earlier today. And let's use one of my favorite rules, which is the Pengo rule. Uh, this was uh, from a guy on uh, MD5 Decryptor. He developed this rule. 
I really like it. It finds a lot of finds really quick. So let's go ahead and tell it the output. Yeah, it's got a bunch of errors. Oh, oops. My bad, I chose the wrong file. All right, let's go for something here. What can we use? All right, let's use one of my big files that I've test a lot on. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, tell it to start here. And you'll notice that this starts building up and it takes actually a while to build up because I'm using such a large hash file. And we wait and we wait and we wait. And you can actually see my GPUs over here as they start to spurn up. As you can see right there, it says that one of the rules is not properly formatted, not a big deal. You see the kernels are loading right there. One kernel for each type of video card. The speeds they're operating, how much RAM's available, I've got temperatures disabled, how many rules are in the rules file that I'm using, and which dictionary it's starting off with. I have this as my foreign language dictionary, which is a combination of a whole bunch of different foreign languages from, well, foreign being away from English for me. So, you know, it's going along. As you can see, my temperatures are starting to, my thermometers and temperature are starting to spike up, which means my video card is using. Here's my 6670. You can see it's spiking up as well. And you can see my GPU loads are 100%. 100% GPU loads. And if I hit the status symbol, you can see that, in fact, out of the 7,901,000, blah, 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 something I've actually only recovered two right now. And that's because this is actually a very tough hash file that I've been keeping and I've been slowly working on these. And yeah, I hit a status update. You know, it's still churning through. And as it gets done with each dictionary, it moves on to the next one. Pingo is a very, very fast rule. I like to define initial finds. And so because of it, it's not coming up with a whole lot because these hashes are actually, that I'm using this file are actually very tough. And you can see the speeds are sometimes fast, sometimes slow. And it just depends on what it's doing. Now, rule files do typically things. They modify uh, case, they add numbers, they replace symbols. You know, you have... You know, people want to do leap speak, and so they'll put, like, you know, rather than ask, they'll put a dollar sign. Well, this rules will ch place those out, test out the hash, compare the value, because there really is no true way to crack a hash. What we are doing is we are creating a word using the rule and then comparing the hash value to the other hash value. And if they match, we've got to find. Because there's no true way, really, to decrypt hashes. We just match. I do believe I'm saying this correct. Again, I'm learning as I'm getting better and better at doing hash cracking, and that is my understanding of how hashing works. So out of curiosity, let's just hit another status. We found seven now. So as we go along, you just got to learn to find out, you know, <clears throat> the hash file you're using, where, where is it from? You know, is it from a German or is it from, you know, a Canadian website? And so because of that, you learn to adapt your dictionaries to that. So you say, oh... You know, these people are from Germany. Let's try a German word dictionary because, yeah, I'm spelling it out in English, but, you know, they might uh, have words that are common over there that I don't know, but the dictionary might come up with on its own and the rules might come up off on its own. And one of the great things that you got to do is you got to collect a lot of dictionaries because you never know when what you're going to end up using. So let's go ahead and hit a status. Okay, it's found 10, whatever. I'm just going to quit there. I'm going to show you a different type of attack we have a combination attack. This takes two different dictionaries and puts them together. And it combines the different combinations. I'll just go for some small dictionaries here. That way we can just see how it looks because these rather can be rather large uh, and time consuming. So I just put these two together. You can adjust how much on the left and right. I typically don't do that. We can go ahead and start here. As you can see, it's going through, it's, it's just preparing itself right now. GPs are not running. The tool is actually more doing CPU stuff right now as it prepares itself. And I can kind of, if it lags a little bit, I usually press S and it pulls it. And as you can see, it's building the kernels because these kernels are for different types of attacks. And it's, it's building itself up. It's saying it's using the combination of these many words with this many words to build it. And we're just waiting for it to start here. And once you actually, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but you, my uh, fans are spinning like crazy over there on my cards. 
which is out of status. Oh, look, you know, I've already hit 50. 50. There's 100. So it's rather churning through a lot of passwords really quick here as I combine the different dictionaries together. And part of hash cracking is learning just to think outside of the box, think of, you know, you've run through your basic rules, now let's try some different combinations, let's try some different ideas. And sometimes when it comes down, sometimes you end up just brute forcing. And that is an area I really try to avoid because of the time it takes and the good results you usually don't typically get. So let's just add a CRF 334. As you can see, it, this says um, the time I started and the estimated time to completion of this dictionary. So it started the dictionary, this dictionary combination, one minute ago, and expected to be done in 15 seconds. It's not always the case, but you know, it's kind of a best guess. Four seconds left, you can see it's starting to wind down a bit here. One second left, and it probably should be done here. Maybe not, maybe so, let's see here. Yep, and it's done. So out of that, combining two different dictionaries, I actually end up with uh, 434 finds. So let's go ahead and just close that out. Now let's show you another, uh, a, well, we'll skip roof We'll do hybrid dictionary and masks. I don't quite understand masks completely. Again, I'm still learning, but let's just use some, we'll go to my rules file here, use my masks. And I typically use these small rock you have uh, mask files. Let me just use a small one and tell you which combination of dictionary. I'm going to go ahead and try to use it with my best dictionary. And let's see here, where did I put that? Oh, whatever, let's just use this paste bin. A lot of these uh, files I actually got at Megatron's uh, website. He has a lot of good dictionaries there, and I really like his work. So I'm just going to go and run this here. And as you can see, it's again, it's building up. It's probably going to build the kernels again because this is a different type of attack. And I typically don't use these other attacks. They're usually my last resort. I typically use rules attacks with straightforward attacks because... They tend to be the fastest type. Now, these uh, attacks happen at different rates based off the type of hash, how complex the hash is. Some of these hashes go so slow that with the power, my GPU power, I typically just avoid certain ones like, for example, MD5 Unix or DS Unix. Those I avoid just because the amount of time they take to crack, it's not worth it to me. I just leave those for people who have more powerful machines than I do. As you can see here, it's building up the cache with the dictionaries. And it should be starting here. It looks like it started something just going in status. You can see it's already starting to work here. Sometimes it does take a while for my other video cards to come online. And it's mainly my big video card, my uh, HD 5850. That does take a while sometimes to come up online. And so because of that, my slower card, the 6670, is just working at slow rate. And I really hope that card comes online. Sometimes I have to kind of push it around and make it do its work, but basically that's a mask. Right there, it's, it's saying, you know, replace this character with this character, and yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel all that. Let's go on to the next type of attack. Hybrid mask and dictionary, kind of the opposite way of doing, thinking about it. It's basically the same type of attack, but reverse thinking. Let's go ahead and show you uh, brute force, which I never use. And basically what this is going to do is just try passwords one through length of one through eight and just work through the rules and that's typically not something I like to do because again you'll see here in a second that it does take a long time and I really don't feel like it pulls up very good words it pulls up usually people who've created passwords that are just a bunch of random letters and text and you don't learn a whole lot from that as you can see it's building the kernels And it's working itself, and it should be starting here soon. Let's see about my 6670. Nope, that hasn't started yet either. Yeah, see, it's still working. It's still building itself up. Okay, and it should be starting. Look, you can see my GPUs are starting to jump up in their speeds. Let's look at the 5850. Yep, it's starting to bubble. So we look here, and there's the mask. And... 
it doesn't look like it's going to be going. I don't know why. But there we go. As you can see, it's turning through its mega hashes and starting with six characters, and it's not finding anything. And that does not surprise me. I don't like doing brute force, and most people try to avoid brute force. So I'm just going to hit quit. So typically, I will stay with straightforward attacks. Now, you can also, if you come down to the end where you just, you've just you used all your rules, and I have lots of rules that do a bunch of different things. They do all kinds of different stuff, combining different letters, putting different numbers here. A lot of rules help off a lot of different things. I have create words. So when you're all said and done, and you've used up all your rules, you can also do this generate rules. And what this does is it just creates a bunch of random rules, and sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. For me, it usually doesn't help. So I rarely use that option. And then when you can also combine rules, like for example the Pango rule and the Password Pro rule, you can combine those together. So typically that's what it is. You know, a lot of times it's a lot of guesswork, a lot of uh, thinking about where you're getting the sources from, thinking about who you're doing, uh, working with, and what type of thought they got. Where to, you know, yes, a lot of these password files come from people who've obtained it illegally. I really don't care about that. I don't want to see people's usernames. I want to see the password. I'm learning here to be a security engineer. So I do not, if it was inside my own domain, I would legally would have rights to those usernames and hashes. But I'm getting this from other people who I don't know where they got it from, so I do not want to see usernames. So I actually will tell it to ignore usernames right here because I don't want to see that output. In. So that's typically just a quick run through the Hashcat GUI. You can again find us at md5decryptor.co.uk. He's the maker of the tool and I'm a member of the site. You'll see me there. My name is Gavin, G-I-V-E-E-N. I'm kind of new to the security field. I'm learning my way around it. I'm starting to try to work my way into the culture. I've been a computer guy for a very long time in the military and now I'm in, out of the military. And this is just something I'm really liking to learn to do. So if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, post a comment here and I'll get back to you about it. Thank you so much.